So looking at some of these areas where they've used um, stone and um, stone set in mortar to um, protect the banks, it is effective. The thing is, it's actually accelerating the stormwater flows um, downstream. In, um, if we look up, we have a full canopy here. So this is an early spring um, video, but that s significant overhead canopy pretty much precludes us from using um, full-blown native grasses like buffalo grass, a uh, little blue stem, Indian grass, that kind of thing. So there is one green solution that we can propose. That would be using willow stakes um, that would be stuck into the bank every um, 6 to 12 inches that would create a, a, a mass of plant material. Now, the adjacent homeowners have asked that it be kept trim and neat, mowable, uh, right down to the edge of this creek, which is a, normally a very low flow creek, but during a storm event, it gets up bank high. If we look down, we can see some evidence of uh, past sod that's been put down. Uh, of course, the dead trees, a lot of rock that probably came in with the storm flow. But there's rock again, what I call construction rock, um, clean gravel. But if I look down, I see evidence that they had tried to sod, but there's there's not a significant amount of sunlight underneath this canopy. So what we are going to propose here is that um, there you can see that nice clean line or sod. If you also look, if you notice the uh, storm water, we just got a light rain, but the water's flowing off the sod. So the sod is not offering a, um, a significant um, um, stormwater infiltration system. So what we're going to recommend here is a stack ledge rock um, uh, wall system along this creek. They want it neat and clean. They want the kids to be able to play right up to the creek's edge. The green solution um, that uh, we proposed of willow shoots and um, which would become essentially a mass of willow, uh, understory willow trees was not acceptable to the developer because it's not neat and clean. So the, the best solution we have right now is to use, um, stack, you know, to use, uh, limestone ledge rock slabs to, uh, to protect these areas. Um, we're not suggesting using the mortar joints because the mortar joints, um, really decrease the, the perviousness of the um, the stack ledge rock wall along the channel and so we're going to use um, we're going to use some ledge rock flat stones to line this area but allow some infiltration uh, into the uh, subgrade in between the stones we can fill those with gravel in between the stones but what we really want to do is to we will prevent uh, any further erosion of the creek um, banks um, because these people are essentially losing their backyards um, it's undermining their trees they're going to lose more of their trees and so we believe that the stone um, laying loose uh, stone slabs along this creek will um, provide a solution that will prevent um, further loss of the banks and uh, the topsoil that's going down down the creek into the lake uh, that's, that's downstream of here essentially silting in the lake that the um, their neighbors have um, used as an amenity for their uh, development. But we feel that the stone, uh, limestone slabs will do a good job. They're going to be puzzle pieced together so that uh, we do have a pretty contiguous um, armoring of the, of the creek and uh, we'll interplant those perhaps with some willow shoots as allowed by these neighbors. Um, because they, they don't want a big mass of uh, new trees and plants. We were called by a developer to take a look at a creek that had uh, experienced a lot of erosion along the creek channel during major storm events. As you look at this, uh, you can see that there's some, been some hard channeling done with some stone. As I walk up the creek here, you can see that um, the homeowners want their lawns to come right down to the edge of the creek during the normal uh, non-rain event periods, but then they want to um, they want to have a nice green edge all the way up to the edge of this little creek. There's a little 12-inch end section coming out, uh, probably tying in several downspouts, 
uh, from some adjacent homes. But you can see we've got pretty significant erosion going on. There was grass laid here at one time. You can see that there is some existing uh, vegetation. Um, but this community is losing topsoil every time it rains because this, uh, this creek channel, the uh, slopes, the riparian zone along, this, along the creek are not stabilized. And the developer asked us for a solution. You can see there's, there's a dead tree that, that once stood there. There's another dead tree, the stump you can see. The trees are uh, being undermined. The root systems are being undermined by the uh, erosion. Right here we have significant erosion. You can see down the cut there. So here's another end section that comes out from the street. Um, that pipe um, exits uh, right into the creek and then it hits what was a, a hard armored uh, channel here with that stone. That was done to uh, keep the uh, topsoil from being washed away every time, every time it rained. So as we look up here, you can see there's another pipe coming off. Um, this is a, off a downspout, off of a, um, a roof of one of the adjacent homes. But uh, really significant erosion. See right there that cut beyond the hard uh, armored channel. And here again we see the roots, we see the roots of these trees um, being undercut by the creek. So really um, this community is, is just sick about this. They're asking for a green solution to uh, stabilize these slopes. But I uh, just want to get a good look at this as I walk up the creek here. You can see another tree has been undercut. The tree end up dying, so they're losing their trees as well as their grass. Um, there at the top, we're down to the subsoil. You can see the roots here exposed. That means that uh, there was a tree here, and it's been undercut. So a significant amount of what we call a severe erosion. That tree is being undercut. It's going to die if it's not dead already. And we can see it's starting to rain a little bit, but... Uh, Every time it rains and we get a significant uh, storm, uh, a storm event, we're getting a, this creek is filling up. It's getting bank high. In other words, you can see the water's coming all the way up to the top. There's another dead tree. Uh, if we haven't already seen that one. So the problem is we have severe periodic erosion occurring after a significant stormwater event. In other words, a heavy rainfall. There's a big lake up above there that uh, there's another pipe probably tied into people's uh, uh, downspouts off their home. It could be an overflow pipe for this little lake up here. But there's some nice rock channeling there. But then we get to here, and we can see significant uh, erosion from these periodic events. So we've been called in to offer a solution and uh, wanted to get a good look at this before making a recommendation. They wanted a green solution. In fact, they asked for native grass. So my evaluation was to determine if native grass can actually be a solution here. And what I'm going to say is, um, as we look down this creek, there is a significant uh, canopy. Um, of the, if you look at the shade trees, provide a significant canopy. Uh, 